Okie dokie. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, time once again for my pseudo cast. And before I get into it, let me um, let me crack open a can of V8 Energy Orange Pineapple flavored. <sighs> okay, so uh, so this time around, I decided to go ahead and do something different. I'm gonna go ahead and do a. I'm gonna do a gameplay run of uh, Balloons Tower Defense 6, and this is gonna be the skates map uh, in pop in popable level or mode, I should say. So, yeah. and I hope I didn't. Ah. Uh, Oh, damn, we can barely hear it. Damn, well, I messed that up. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think that's fine for what I'm wanting to do. Um... Too quiet for my taste, but uh, I'll I'll go ahead and I'll keep it. Um, but anyway, I've got a fair amount of stuff I gotta go I gotta cover. So, uh, but uh, to start with, um, I got one of my um, one of my regulars. His name's Jake Ryan. Uh, because he um, because he likes what I do, he decided to go ahead and gift me uh by uh give me a whole bunch of uh. A whole bunch of pinball tables from a game called Zachariah Pinball. It's a. I didn't know this until recently, but it's a. It's a pinball company based on in Italy. Yeah, it's an it's an Italian company which I didn't even know about. I thought it was just um, they were just making cheap ghetto, ghetto vir It was like a cheap ghetto virtual tables. That's what I thought, but no. Come to find out later, like yeah, these tables actually exist over in Italy where. You know, where, where the stuff's unheard of over here in America, so that kind of threw me off. But yeah, I started playing some of them tables, and my God, they're freaking hard. I mean, it's like it's like the damn loading screens. The, the you know they or they take longer to load than they do for me to play them. I mean, ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five. That's it. Like I didn't even know what hit me, but it, it this isn't. And this isn't due to my this isn't due to my stupidity or this isn't due to me screwing up or you know mistiming a flip or whatever. Like these tables are legit tough. Like, I mean, oh, what was one of them? I mean, Twilight Zone was supposed to be one of the hardest tables out there. It, it's nothing compared to these ones. Um, Central Park, um, another another super hard table, uh, especially if uh. Especially in real life, because uh, in that table there, nudging the table is pretty much mandatory. And because I have a bad memory, let me type this down. I hate it when they use abbreviations. I mean, you know, you're on a forum or a message board. You have basically infinite amount of space to use. Why don't they just? Why not just type out the entire name? Of course, it also doesn't help that I'm looking at outdated info here. Okay, yeah, and that's another, yeah, I just, I just saw another top table is like Space Shuttle, or not Space Shuttle, but a Space Station, you know, a game that only has outlines, and, you know, that's it, it's almost a throwback to classic tables, but yeah, even a table like this isn't, is nothing compared to the tables that I played on, uh, Zachariah, so, I'm, 
Uh, it's kind of... I, I want to say... The, it's not that the it's too graphics intensive. As much as I want to say maybe poorly optimized. But yeah, good, but uh, it'll... I tend to get a table lag from time to time, but I, I have this feeling that it might be due to my uh, my computer not being able to handle the graphics. But again, I'm a big... Uh... No, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I just thought of this. No, um, after playing some of these tables, I started getting Steam achievements. I started getting all these Steam achievements like over and over and over and over and over. I think that was probably what's lagging the game. So, yeah, so evidence on that is going to be inconclusive. But at, at any rate... Yeah, these these tables are a bitch. Like I said, it's like the loading, it's like the they take longer to load than they do for me to actually play them. So, but yeah, I'll, I don't. I would kind of like to work this in my weekly pinball stream, but I don't know in what way. Because already as it is now, I'm playing two different games. I'm already playing two different uh, pinball games. Uh, FX3 and Pinball Arcade. And, uh, for... For just, uh... For uploading gameplay videos, I try to keep it to around an hour. When it comes to streams, I try to keep it around two hours. You know, I just try not to... Yeah, it's... Yeah, because usually, typically, around the two-hour the, the two hour mark, I'm probably already getting pretty frustrated. You know, with the old ball drains and whatnot. So, but... But, yeah, any, anyway, I don't... Again, I don't know where I'd be able to work in Zachariah Pinball. So... Oh, and I forgot to mention, last night was, uh, I, I called in last night, so day three of my self-quarantine, so the rest of this weekend, though, I'm actually off, so. But otherwise, um, aside from that, I've been watching a lot of Do Not Eat videos. Um, he's, uh, I've said, I think I said this in one of my earlier casts, but uh, he's, uh, I, I think he's an engineer, Maybe a civil engineer. And from what little I could glean of him. Um, I think he was also a... I think he's like a college professor too. I think. I don't know. But like I said, I, he doesn't really talk much about his personal life. But uh, he's... Uh, he's he's taking this game called City Skylines. Which I'm, uh, I'm a little... I'm a little bit inspired to take up. But again, I'm... $30 price tag, and I thought of this uh, during last night's stream. Um, the game might actually be too much for me, uh, graphics-wise. Like, I could probably, uh, I could probably turn the graphics down to the, to, excuse me, I could turn the graphics settings down to the lowest, but then, if I did that, it's gonna be pretty damn ugly, so. And, again, the $30 price tag, it's kind of gray area. I mean, I know I could request a refund, but, if for some reason that, um, Request gets rejected. That means I'm stuck with a $30 game that I can't really play. So, but any anyway, he's uh, he's using this, he's using this game to actually build a city. But unlike most other um, most other streamers or YouTubers that play these kind of games, he's he's basically going all the way back to like like ancient times, like back when you know when the Indian Native Americans were the only ones here living in this country. Like, he's going that far back. He isn't just creating some some idealized utopia or anything like that, or any, you know, but he's he's kind of giving a history lesson. You know, through this. And, uh, I'm actually learning quite a bit from him. And, you know, and keep in mind, this guy isn't a, he's no politician, he's not, I, you know, the guy's an engineer. And I'm actually learning more from this guy than I am from, say, say if some if some politician was actually to try playing City Skylines or something like that. You know, you know, it, he's be, he's definitely an inmate that can run the asylum. So yeah, it's kind of 
It's kind of what I said about my job, now that I think about it. I mean, I don't think we really need managers all that much. I mean, the friggin' inmates can run the asylum. I mean... So... But, yeah, it... But, yeah, he's also, um... He's actually doing, uh... But he's actually doing two different... Two different video series. One, he's, uh, he's doing one called Franklin. That's the one where he's, uh, he's... He's building up a city from scratch. He's taking it from, uh... From, you know, again, way back in, uh... From the colonial period and eventually to the modern day period. And he's... He's doing another one called, um... Uh, like cities and politics or something like that. Cities, housing, and politics or something like that. But uh, he's he's basically talking about urban planning. But again, he's using this game to do it. He, I got a feeling I'm gonna have a few nightmares about that one because uh, some of the stuff that he talks about, I have gone through at some point in my life. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of, um, I'm trying to think of one in particular. But, uh, oh, I, w I haven't been on the receiving end of this, but one thing he mentions is, uh, they'll, uh, like, in fact, I think I'm, there's probably a few movies out there about this, um, about, uh, like, urban renewal. I think that, I think that's the term he used, urban renewal, and, uh, slum removal again I've never I've never been on the receiving end of these but I've uh, I've heard of it happening like uh, somebody wanted to somebody wanted to build a uh, an office building for example where these uh where these cheap low-income apartments are so they'll so he'll start talking about all these dirty tricks that uh the um the urban renewal people will do to try to get the tenants to try to get the tennis to leave. Um, one trick they'll do is all uh, they'll send they'll send them an eviction notice, like just out of the blue. Even if the uh, tenants are in the middle of their lease, they'll send them an eviction notice anyway, which I guess is like very illegal. But um, uh, but it, it's just a it's just it's basically a, it's basically an open threat is what it is. Like if you don't leave now. Things are going to get a lot worse for you later on. That kind of thing. But yeah, he just, he goes into, but he, he details all these steps that uh, all these, uh, all these uh, corporate types will do to try to get people up, uh, get people out of a certain area so they can build their, so they can build their corporate office building or whatever. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here watching him talk about all this. And, uh, you know, you know, Start, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have nightmares about this now. Like, nope. I mean, my rent goes up every year. So it. You know, I, I don't, and I don't. I there's, I can't really think of a clear-cut reason why. You know, I mean, to be fair, it only goes up like 10 to 20 bucks a year. But still, I mean, when you've lived here like 12 years, like I have. I mean that's I mean that's an extra 120 to 240 dollars of rent that I gotta pay now. So. But yeah, this guy, he talks um, he talks politics, he talks philosophy, but and, and and again on top of it, these are to me these are my kind these are the kind of people that I really listen to. You know. Political commentary from people who aren't politicians, at least in my mind, tend to be the best politicians of all. People who aren't lifers. And I believe uh, Jesse Ventura was somebody who said this too. I mean, he's got a, I think he has a deep-seated hatred of career politicians. He's never been a fan of them. Because now they're, they're not really, they're just, uh, they're just going with whatever type of, type of viewpoints will get them reelected because they don't want to lose their jobs and go back to running a cash register or changing tires or whatnot. But I, again, it's I mean, to me, the best politicians are not politicians by trade. They're guys like Frank Zappa. The guy's, a mu you know, he's a musician. 
but yet he he definitely had his fingers on the he had his uh he had better fingers on the pulse of the country than most politicians do. You know George Carlin and um, various other comedians. You know they're they're way better politicians than the politicians actually are. You know it's I I, I probably said this in other casts too, and I guess I can say it here. Uh, the the inmates can run the asylum. You know I I kind of said this about my job too. You know man you know management often you know management will often put on this air of superiority and some of it's deserved you know because I mean I generally they have to stay and finish up what we leave behind so so I mean what you know it's not a complete fabrication of what they do but you know they still they still put on this like air of superiority like they know something we don't you know especially to somebody like myself I've been in the grow you know I've been in retail for like 30 years now you ain't surprising me you know, you know, don't act like I've never had to work overtime or something, or I've never, you know, don't act like I've never been told that I couldn't leave until the job was done. So, so I mean, like I said, the inmates can run the asylum, and and you know, and 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 again, like I said, like the aforementioned examples, you know, Zappa, Bill Hicks, George, you know, Frank, uh, George Carlin. Um, I I don't even know this guy's real name. Um, but the the do not eat guy. You know, again, uh, he's a he's a civil en- he's an engineer. Um, uh, maybe a civil engineer. I don't. I'm thinking those two are like aren't one and the same. They're different. Like an engineer and a civil engineer. Maybe it's like a specialization or something. But you you kind of get the idea. But I mean, he's. You know his career. You know his career is in engineering, not politics. You know, Carlin and Hicks, their career is in comedy, not politics. But yet they know more about politics than the damn politicians do. I mean, they they tend to be the ones that I listen to. Um, Jessica Wildfire. Um, some people probably heard me mention her. I think I've done a, and I actually I've actually done a commentary video or two on her on her writings. She's a writer and a college professor. Not a politician or anything like that, but yet she knows more about politics than politicians do. You know, I think, um, and I'm pretty sure um, that could extend to the finance too. Most of us poor, you know, a lot of us poor people probably know about, probably know more about economics than the damn economic people do. Or the, or at the very least, the corporate businessmen. I mean, you, you can kind of, you can kind of tell, you can kind of tell if you look at this game. I mean, I'm at round 86 right now. I mean, granted, I have a, uh, I have the double cash perk. But I mean, look, but you know, I'm, I made it to round 88 right now. I'm doing this by not being stupid with my money. I don't have the infinite funds cheat. It's, I'm pretty sure a lot of these rich businessmen, that's what they have. It's. You know they're so wealthy. It it, it again. They, it's like they have the infinite cash cheat. You know, money price is no object. Money's no object. They ain't got to worry about a budget or anything like that. That's why they you know. It's what makes them come up with stupid shit like, you know, like the uh, hyperloop that I guess Elon Musk did. Um, Elon Musk also had a something called a loop where. It was a, it, it's kind of a car-based transit system. I. I can't really explain it here, but you, I best bet just look it up on YouTube. A uh, hyperloop, and there was also a regular loop. But I think um, after, but uh, do not eat did a video on this. And from what little I gleaned about the hyperloop, it's just more of the same. But I think this is what happens. This is what happens when uh, people have that infinite punch cheat. They're just so stupid with their, you know, they're so stupid with their ideas and whatnot. And um. Space tourism. Um, Jessica Wildfire was talking about this. Um, Jeff Bezos. Elon Musk. Um, Richard Branson, I think, is another one. All these guys are sitting here talking about, you know, colonizing Mars or, or hell, even worse, they're actually, they're basically, you know, they're wanting to put together a space transit system. 
you don't worry, you can, you can just, you can pay a, pay a shuttle fare or whatever, hop in the space shuttle and it'll take you, you know, take you on a tour of the solar system, you know, instead of, you know, maybe using some of that money to, you know, to address climate change and try to make this world a better place or try to make, you know, try to leave the world, you know what, try to leave the world in a better condition than how you found it. No, they're sitting here wanting to spend money on stupid shit. It ain't, you know, again, never thought I would be taught, would be using this game here to talk about politics or to talk about politics and finance. But again, you know, look at all the balloons coming in. And yes, I am saved 30. Once I get 38,000 here, I'm spending it on Energizer because that's going to shorten all the cooldowns on the ship-based abilities and I'm going to need them. Because uh, these big old balloons, they're going to keep bigger and bigger, and they're just going to keep getting more and more of them, so. So, but again, look look at what I'm doing with all this money I'm getting. I'm at uh, round 98 right now. And I'm very sorry if you guys have never seen this game before, but this is just something I came up with on a whim. You know, I mean, I guess if, if you want to, if you want to apply this to the real world, you know, you know, if you, you know, I think there can be a much better usage of, usage of money than just on stupid bullshit. Oh, here comes the big purple. This is why I haven't saved, you know, this is why I haven't, you know. And I couldn't have done this if I was just spending my money on stupid shit like, uh, Loops, hyperloops, and uh, space tourism. And this here is free play mode. Uh, basically, impoppable mode is complete. So right now, I'm basically running out the clock or just seeing how far I can get. So, yeah. Strange that I'm talking politics and politics and economics here via a video game but I think I might uh, I might actually start this over because there was something else I thought about too um I think and that's something else here too sorry I'm kind of I'm kind of rambling but I'm trying to put the words together in my head I think mean, some of the best political philosophers or some of the you know some of the best I guess some of the best philosophies in general actually come from video games yeah it's game over here some bad planning or er, with all the balloons that were coming through let me pause it, let me pause it well I guess it's gonna start over but anyway I mean some of the I mean some of the best philosophy you know some of the best politicians came from video games too um I think there was uh, the game Final Fantasy Tactics oh god what was his name Uyghur I for, eh, for those that don't know, uh, Uyghur was a leader of a group called the Death Corps. Um, in that game there, there was strict class divisions. Upper class, middle class, lower class. The Death Corps were a bunch of lower classers. Uh, just poor people. I think disenfranchised knights. Um, but they're, um, they're basically they're a group of rebels uh, defying the upper class. So, but, um, the leader of that group, Uyghur, um, some of the stuff I read about him before he went batshit crazy, it's, it, it's just in-game, it's, um, in-game storyline stuff. I don't really want to go into it here, but, but, uh, before, you know, before he went off the rails, he's, the guy was freaking awesome. Um, one of my favorite lines that I definitely believe this today is, uh, if the punishment for a crime is a fine, then that punishment was meant only for the lower class. And I just thought about, yeah, that's totally true. Because the lower class people, they don't have, they don't have much money. So yeah, you, you know, you, you punish us by making us pay you money that we really can't afford to be spending. Yeah, it's going to be more punishing than say the upper class. They're filthy, stinky rich. I mean, fines are pointless with those guys because, you know, they got money coming out the wazoo. Now, now you probably argue if it was a, if it was a, it was a, if it was based on a percentage of their net income or whatever, then yeah, it, 
it'd make more sense. But again, you need the the general I, the general just is there. So yeah, and I think he had a he's had a, he's he's had some other quotes in there too. I'm like, damn, this is righteous. But again, you know, I think there's another one. Um, probably uh, probably my all time favorite good guy, uh, Ogre Battle '64. I think his name was Frederick, and he was a leader of the Revolutionary Army. I mean, he's he said some profound stuff too. But if you're kind, of, but if you're kind of sensing the general theme here, uh, at least with me, the best politicians are not politicians. You know, they're. You know, the best. The best economics, or the, the best economists. I think that's the correct pronunciation. The best economists are poor people, or those that are those whose careers don't involve finance at all. I mean, pro probably poor people because, you know, we're used to penny. You know, we're used to pinching pennies. You know, we learned how to, how to stretch that dollar. You know, we learned how to be frugal. So I mean, you know, we we're way better at managing our money than billionaires who basically have the infinite funds cheap. They basically, uh, their whole life is just a bunch of game shark codes. You know, because of that, they can just do, like, totally stupid off-the-wall shit. So. Uh, and I am definitely going to be going over long with this, but yeah, I want to, this was something else that, uh, one of Do Not Eat's videos was staying. Uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness always had an asterisk next to it. Yup. Uh, George Carlin said the same thing. This country was founded by a group of slave owners who wanted to be free. So, yeah. That definitely a unvarnished truth right there. So, um, But, anyway, since I've, um, I pretty much said all the things I wanted to say this morning, and, um, this video here is probably going to be a, a pretty huge one. We're probably looking at at least three gigabytes long. So I really do need to get going on getting this video uploaded because we're probably looking at at least an hour to get this video uploaded and processed and all that stuff. And and I'm and I'm, this video is being uploaded to two different places. I don't know if people know this. So it's also one of the reasons why ideally I try to keep the, this video to around 15, these videos to around 15 minutes is because this, these are being uploaded to two different places, YouTube and Twitch. So I'm having to do double duty here. So, uh, But anyway, um, aside from that, though, I mean, if you guys... I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, screw it. But anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, but until then... Thanks again for stopping by and see you all next time.